Ragnarok is a battle between humans and gods. This battle will determine the survival of humanity, and its origins stem from a assembly of the gods. Every 1000 years, all the gods assemble, led by Zeus. He is this frail old man. They are convening to decide the survival after 7 million years of humanity, when most gods believe that, the existence of humans is unnecessary, as they only bring about war and catastrophe. So, all the gods unanimously decide to annihilate all of humanity. Suddenly, a demigod appeared, named Brunhilde, stepping in to oppose their judgment. She questions why not use the gods' ultimate rule, to challenge humans before passing judgment, and suggests organizing a battle between humans and gods' beings. If humans win, they'll be allowed to exist for another 1000 years, causing all the gods to burst into laughter, because they believe that humans cannot possibly triumph over divine beings. After Brunhilde's provocation, Zeus agreed, Brunhilde will choose 13 of the strongest individuals from humanity's 7 million year history, to battle against the 13 mightiest gods. If the human side can win 7 battles first, then they will have a chance to continue existing. Thus, the great war between humans and the gods officially commences. The entire human race and the gods are gathered at the arena. The first representative stepping into the main arena on behalf of the divine is the thunder god, Thor. He's renowned as the mightiest god in the Norse pantheon, making Gaul begin to worry. Uncertain if any human can fight with this god, for Thor's strength is recounted in tales. From ancient times in Asgard, the realm of the gods, during a battle against a tribe of giants akin to those from Attack on Titan, they invaded the city to annihilate humanity. All the angels fiercely defended, they were the mightiest guardians in Asgard, yet, they all became the giant's toothpicks, making all the other gods tremble in fear, thinking that Asgard had met its doom. However, there was a god who stepped forward to confront them, with just a hammer, he has defeated all the giants, yet, he felt terribly bored for he hadn't found any opponent to satisfy his desires. At this moment, Brunhilde remained calm, because the first person she chose on humanity's side was someone incredibly powerful, renowned as the mightiest in the Three Kingdoms era, Lu Bu. His appearance surprised the gods immediately. Lu Bu was born on the Mongolian steppes. Since he was young, Lu Bu always sought out and challenged the mighty. Therefore, he had many loyal followers, until he realized there was no one left worthy of being his opponent. Lu Bu felt life becoming meaningless. Hence, he decided to gave himself to Cao Cao simply out of sheer boredom. Even Zhu Liang, Zhang Fei, and Guan Yu, all had to acknowledge Lu Bu as the mightiest in the Three Kingdoms. At this point, both were ready to fight, but with just human strength, it seemed impossible to defeat divine beings. Brunhilde was well aware of this. At this moment, the horn signaled the beginning of the battle, then both slowly moved toward each other. Lu Bu immediately attacked and pushed back Thor, surprising everyone present. Why could the strength of a human contend with that of a god? At this point, Thor executed a backward fall technique, the very move that wiped out the Titan army. Just when everyone thought Lu Bu wouldn't endure, then he stood up and immediately attacked Thor, astonishing all the gods. Meanwhile, Thor was laughing, for he finally found someone who could fight him. At this moment, Zeus realized Brunhilde's trickery. It turned out that before the battle began, she had gathered her 13 Valkyrie sisters, to sacrifice themselves and transform into divine weapons. This was the special power of the Valkyries, transmitted through Lu Bu's memories, she could transform into a divine weapon suitable for him, thus, she could shatter even Thor's divine glove, bringing immense joy to humanity, for it proved to the gods the strength of humans. Meanwhile, Zeus was exhilarated, thanking Brunhilde, but at that very moment, Thor's hammer began to wake up. Much like a living creature, he removed the iron gauntlet and dropped it to the ground, creating an indentation in the earth. It turns out these gauntlets were to restrain Thor's power. Lu Bu, I beg one thing of you. Please don't die. Then Thor hurled his hammer, yet Lu Bu managed to evade it. Unexpectedly, the hammer returned to Thor's hand once more. It turns out that throw was just a prelude to a fatal blow. Though he managed to withstand it, but Lu Bu's legs were broken, because ultimately, his body remained that of a mortal. Everyone thought this match was lost. Suddenly, Red Hair charged in. Encouraged by the support of everyone, Lu Bu tried to stand and leapt onto Red Hair's back. Thor then offered a friendly smile. At this point, Lu Bu decided to unleash Ultimate Technic Sky Eater. To perform this technique, Le Bo had trained for many years, slashing continuously through the air, until one day, that strike split the sky in half. Thor was also delighted. He then used his own ultimate move once more 
The two attacks clashed, creating a tremendous shockwave in the arena. Unexpectedly, Lu Bu was defeated. Nevertheless, he chose to sacrifice fiercely. Finally, Thor emerged victorious, causing mankind to fall into the brink of despair. Meanwhile, Thor regret a hero like Lu Bu. Suddenly, Red Hair and the soldiers of Lu Bu all stepped forward. They wished to follow their general. Consider this as a gift for my friend Lu Bu. Brunhilde said they were all souls, so when their souls shatter, they cannot be reborn anymore, including their Valkyrie sisters. At this point, Brunhilde has selected the second representative for humanity, with the file number 01. The second battle is about to begin. The representative for humanity this time is none other. He is the first ancestor of mankind, Adam, helping everyone believe in their ancestors. Unexpectedly, there's a small change in the battle. Hermes steps forward and begins to play the music, which surprises Brunhilde, because Adam's opponent is Zeus, the father of the gods, humans, however, do not know who this frail old man is. They don't know if he might have a stroke in the middle of it. He starts dancing to the music, with the encouragement of the gods. Zeus immediately transforms, into a muscular old man. At this moment, humanity realizes he is the supreme god of Olympus. It turns out this match belongs to the god Shiva. But Zeus wants to fight first, aren't you going to fight in the final battle, old man? But with Zeus's power, Shiva has to change his mind. I yield to you, now Zeus eagerly asks. Where is your divine weapon? She's here, a girl with glasses rushes towards Adam, and transforms into an iron fist. Where is your weapon, old man? I'll fight you barehand a, unexpectedly. Zeus's punch was thrown, yet Adam managed to dodge it effortlessly. Zeus accelerated his punches in 0, 0, 0 001 seconds. Then in 0, 0, 0, 0 001 seconds. But also did not touch Adam. Zeus throw a kick like a axe. Yet Adam just needed one jump to evade. All you know is to run away, don't you? Suddenly, Adam began to counterattack, taking Zeus by surprise with his incredible speed. Even mimicking Zeus's techniques, bringing joy to all of humanity, turns out. Adam was created by divine spirits, in other words, he is a replica of the gods. He also possesses a pair of divine reflection eyes that can replicate any technique. So Zeus continued to attack, but Adam copied and countered every move, causing Zeus to truly become enraged. He decided to unleash a special move, learned before killing his father, a technique that could even freeze time, but unexpectedly, Adam could replicate it, and countered Zeus, Zeus's face completely turned backward, he was defeated by Adam, so swift that even the god of war, Ares, couldn't see it, but Hermes could see everything, causing Ares to be furious because he showed off in front of him, Brunhilde recounts, Adam used to live in paradise with Eve, but one day, Eve was arrested for the crime of eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge. It turns out it was this serpent god who tempted Eve, yet, he allowed Eve to escape, which angered him, leading him to harm Eve. At this moment, Adam appeared with two baskets of fruit from the tree of knowledge, eating and spraying them around, surprising all the gods. When Adam wanted to take Eve away, the serpent god transformed to capture them, but Adam copied this technique and defeated him, thus, both descended to earth. At this moment, Everyone believed Adam had won. Brunhilde couldn't hide her smile. Unexpectedly, Zeus stood up again. Zeus asked why he couldn't sense Adam's hatred towards divine beings. What hatred? Does protecting my children's also need a reason? Causing all of humanity to burst into tears. Suddenly, Zeus began to self-crush his own body. Loki explained he was releasing his final form. This made everyone shudder. Because Zeus's ultimate form is named Adama's, he continued to attack Adam. But Adam managed to block all his attacks. Brunhilde started feeling uneasy. It turns out Adam's eyes had reached their limit. Unexpectedly, this was Zeus's plan. But even he reached his limit, Loki said. Now is the time to see who is more enduring. All gods and humans stood up to watch this battle. Unexpectedly, just a drop of blood in Adam's eyes pushed him to his limit before Zeus. Thus, Zeus retaliated. At this moment, Adam could only defend, because he was blinded. Humanity began to cry out, unable to see their father in agony, but to protect his children, Adam immediately grabbed Zeus's bald hair head, both engaging in an intense struggle. Finally, there was an outcome. Zeus fell down, reverting to his normal state. Everyone thought he had lost, but Adam died standing. Before Zeus fell, Adam and Valkyrie both vanished. All of humanity stood up to memento their ancestor. Brunhilde realized humanity had lost two consecutive matches, unsure which warrior to choose next. Suddenly, a man stepped forward. Let me handle this battle. 
they recognized this old man as Sasaki. Not understanding why others summoned in their prime, this man appeared so aged, because this is my golden age. Thus, the third battle commenced. The next god to step into the arena was the god of the seas. The name is Poseidon. He is Zeus's elder brother, even terrifying all other gods. At this moment, Sasaki approached the arena in a small boat. He is famously known as history's greatest loser. People started underestimating Sasaki, as he was just an old man, how could he win? But when Sasaki drew his sword, all swordsmen and gods could sense, his swordsmanship had reached an unparalleled level. Both began silently observing each other. But in reality, Sasaki was envisioning how to attack Poseidon. He was killed more than 18 times, because Poseidon had no vulnerabilities. At this moment, Brunhilde revealed, that atop Olympus, there are 13 gods, but there was one god named Adamas whom Poseidon killed, and that is also the final form's name of Zeus, because Adamas was displeased with Zeus leading the gods, while he is the eldest brother, so, Adamas proposed Poseidon to overthrow Zeus together, but Poseidon disagreed, for Poseidon, gods do not plot, or who they rely on, that's what makes a perfect god, this enraged Adamas, and he remembered Poseidon since birth, never once looking into his eyes, with just one strike, Poseidon defeated Adamas, suddenly, Sasaki sat down, taking a rest, freezing everyone in shock, as it turns out, Sasaki had been in martial arts since he was young, realizing he couldn't win, Sasaki surrendered, making everyone think he was just a loser, but they didn't know, after every defeat, Sasaki trained hard, so, when Sasaki returned to the martial arts dojo, then they are no longer his rivals, thus, Sasaki directly challenged his master, but Sasaki continued to fail. Sometime later, the master came to find Sasaki. Upon entering his training room, the master realized Sasaki had challenged many people, and went beyond his limits, to keep getting stronger. Sasaki challenged opponents all over, but time and time again, Sasaki always ended up losing. After each loss, he trained in his imagination, to overcome his adversaries. At this moment, Sasaki decided to rise, and attack Poseidon. He utilized the swallow reversal technique, cutting down a lock of Poseidon's hair. Poseidon then began to move, surprising all the gods, as it was the first time they saw Poseidon serious, but Sasaki managed to evade everything. Brunhilde explained, that he had envisioned over 1000 of Poseidon's attack patterns, so he could dodge every attack. Suddenly, Poseidon changed his stance, impaling through Sasaki with a trident, as the divine side cheered for Poseidon. He became irritable, silencing the whole arena. Poseidon said, I don't need friends, you truly are a pathetic god. This angered Poseidon further, using the wrathful wave technique, continuously thrusting the spear at Sasaki, even though he anticipated Poseidon's attacks, but, he couldn't touch him, feeling like he was drowning in the ocean. Sasaki attempted another strike. Unexpectedly, Poseidon managed to snap his sword. Normally, he would concede defeat. But this time, Sasaki had to win, he continued to reminisce, when fighting Musashi, a samurai wielding dual swords, that was the first time he didn't surrender, also the first time Sasaki found joy in battle, but ultimately, he still lost. Sasaki picked up his divine sword again, instantly transforming it into dual swords, it turns out this Valkyrie goddess has two personalities, Poseidon continued thrusting his spear at Sasaki, Musashi realized Sasaki had copied all the techniques of the swordmasters, at this moment, he was able to land a hit on Poseidon, causing his body to be covered in wounds. Poseidon then take his hair up, to immediately engage in a serious battle with Sasaki. Even now, Poseidon's speed increased significantly, becoming as fast as a vortex, making Sasaki unable to keep up. He felt like he was sinking deep into the ocean. Suddenly, Sasaki heard the cheers from the crowd, all the swordsmen worldwide supported him, helping Sasaki regain his spirits. He knew he couldn't lose this battle. Sasaki attained the unmatched knight and Ganryu style techniques, enabling him to read all of Poseidon's attacks. Finally, he unleashed a finishing blow, marking humanity's first victory, causing all the gods to be in shock, unbelieving that humans could defeat a deity. Yet humanity gained more hope. At this point, the gods united, despite their reluctance, they had to admit, Humans were indeed powerful. Now, Shiva wanted to fight. But Zeus aimed to settle the debt of the Greek gods. Thus, the next battle began. This arena was the 19th century city of London, representing humanity's warriors this time. It turned out as a serial killer emerges, the haunting of the entire city of London, the most notorious criminal in human history. 
nicknamed Jack the Ripper, leaves everyone astonished, representing the divine in this battle, is the righteous hero Heracles, when the battle begins, Brunhilde doesn't know whom the gods will choose, upon seeing Heracles, Gaul immediately became joyful, because they are both demigods, they are very close to each other, but this time, it's his turn to fight, Brunhilde kneels only to wish him luck, suddenly, Loki appears to taunt Heracles, although Heracles is a hero, opposing the extinction of humanity, yet, as a deity, he also cannot afford to lose this battle, as for Brunhilde, she wore a confident smile, because her opponent chosen for Heracles is a scum of society, seeing Jack infuriates Heracles, I'm a hero, why should I fight such a despicable person? Even humanity doesn't know which side to support, for he callously murdered five strip girls in the slums, London police tried everything to catch him, but they found no trace, not even Sherlock Holmes could solve that case, so, until now, his identity remains a mystery, Heracles orders Jack to surrender, but he just politely greets him, as he doesn't want to lose this fight either, then he draws his scissors out, also the weapon he uses for his kill, as Heracles prepares to fight, Jack quickly turns and runs away, infuriating him, it turns out it's time for Jack's tea break, he then offers Heracles a drink, at this point, he had set up a trap with knives around him, but regular weapons do not affect divine beings, suddenly, he pulls out a gun and continues to flee, Heracles immediately leaps to chase after him, he shatters Jack's divine scissors, suddenly, Jack pulls out knives to attack Heracles, unexpectedly, this time it's effective, surprising Heracles, my divine tool isn't a scissors, it's the bag that creates these knives, people find him too cunning, and Gaul couldn't comprehend why Brunhilde chose him, do you know that humans excel deities in cunning? At this point, Heracles is truly enraged, dodging Jack's knife strikes, he steadily moves towards Jack to retaliate, but Jack uses an umbrella to block him, suddenly, Heracles uses divine power, tattoos spreading across his body, this technique is called the 12 calamities and sins of Heracles, with just one strike, he sends Jack flying, however, Jack stands up again, and even resets his dislocated arm on his own, it turns out, from a young age, Heracles always honored righteousness, standing up to aid the weak, every day, he trained to become stronger, at this point, two guys come to provoke, challenging Heracles to go to Zeus' temple and drink a drop of Zeus' blood, if that person isn't a true hero, they'll instantly turn dead, but it's just a tale that no one believes, so, every day, Heracles continues his training alone, meanwhile, the gods are passing judgment on humanity, even though they still exist, they must be punished for causing wars, the god of war, Ares, takes on the task of handling this matter, only Heracles dared to stand up in resistance, but he was kicked and pinned against the wall, knowing he couldn't fight back, he took a bold move to try drinking Zeus' blood, suddenly, his body emitted smoke, making everyone think Heracles had perished, unexpectedly, the hero was born, Ares recognized this power resembling that of his father, fortunately, Zeus stopped them just in time, you've consumed my blood, so now you shall become a god, he pleaded Zeus not to harm humanity, and Zeus agreed, since then, Heracles gained strength and became a hero, returning to Jack, who continued hurling knives at Heracles, he also has a set of wires suspended in midair, leveraging these strings, he shot knives toward Heracles, his body was covered in knives like a porcupine, therefore, Heracles immediately used the technique of the sixth labor, and deflected the knives back at Jack, causing him to get wounded, unexpectedly, Jack's other eye turns red, it allows Jack to perceive the emotions within people, this is the first time I've killed a god, Jack starts humming the London song, reflecting on his childhood, since childhood, he lived in the slums, gifted with eyes that can see through human emotions, thanks to flattery towards the chef, Jack managed to get food to bring home to his mother, it sounds like she is a prostitute in the slums, Jack saw how much his mother cared for him, every day, Jack brought food home for his mother, but one day, he saw her crying, because the man she loved had married someone else, from then on, she began to change, she cursed, I wish I hadn't given birth to you, it turns out she gave birth to Jack just to marry that man, so, Jack decided to take action against his own mother, witnessing her emotions shift from red to purple, finally turning into a white hue, making Jack excited, prompting him to seek out and kill that man, since then, Jack has killed many to satisfy himself, returning to Jack's battle, Heracles keeps on attacking him, Jack rushes up the clock tower to escape, but it was destroyed by Heracles, suddenly, Jack hurls the clock face at him, immediately causing Heracles to lose an arm, surprising the gods, 
It's then that Heracles realizes. Jack is lying again. His true weapon isn't the bag. It's actually the pair of gloves. Everything he touches with them becomes a divine weapon. Initially, even this girl refused to be Jack's divine weapon, because he's a murderer. But upon witnessing Jack's terrifying nature, she was compelled to turn into a pair of gloves for him. With just a stone, he could shot through a wall. The entire city itself is his weapon. At this point, everyone roots for Heracles. Ares, however, feels hopeless, and Zeus punches him for losing faith. He believing that Heracles can win, yet, Jack admires Heracles, because, regardless of the situation, his demeanor remains unchanged. Unlike all those he has killed, suddenly, Heracles speaks. You've already lost, because you're a demon betrayed by others, only deeping to indulge in your own desires. Despite humans being cunning, greedy, and foolish, yet, I still love them. So Jack immediately sensed it. His color resembles the love of his mother. At this moment, Heracles summons three hellhounds. This is his twelfth labor technique, transforming into an infernal armor. Zeus warns that though this armor is mighty, it will corrode Heracles. Heracles keeps charging at Jack, turning his arm into a colossal fist to punch him, sending Jack flying into a fence, pierced through. Heracles thinks Jack has no way to retreat. You've forgotten. The entire city itself is my weapon, causing a building to collapse upon Heracles. Sherlock Holmes realizes he had calculated everything from the start, but Heracles still stand up, seeing that his color hasn't changed at all. This excites Jack immensely. He rushes in for a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Heracles, but Jack is losing a lot of blood, unable to hold on much longer. Eventually, Jack is defeated. Humanity shows no sympathy, because he is just a murderer. Nevertheless, Jack hums the London song, standing up. He continued walking toward Heracles, as he prepares to strike a finishing blow. Jack uses his hands to pierce through Heracles, it turns out Jack had planned from the start, using his blood to dye the gloves as divine weapons. Heracles realizes he was defeat, but his love for humanity remains unchanged, shocking all the gods. Finally, Jack emerges as the victor. The girl asked how it feels to kill a god. I'm not sure either. At this moment, Jack just wants to meet Heracles again. But Heracles' followers keep throwing stones at him for killing their beloved hero. Humanity is uncertain about standing by Jack. Gaul, on the other hand, blames Brunhilde for letting Heracles die, yet, it's the only way to save humanity, she seems cold on the surface, but she still grieves deeply for her brother, on the god side, Loki realizes Jack had planned everything from the start, intentionally allowing himself to be pierced through the fence, to dye the gloves with blood, Zeus becomes genuinely furious, realizing they can't afford to lose anymore, Loki seeks out Buddha, feeling that the Valkyries are playing tricks, because they bestowed power upon humanity. Noticing that he talks too much, Buddha says, speak plainly, are you a betrayer? If I am, then what? Suddenly, the seven lucky gods appeared, they are the celestial judges, they want to judge Buddha's sins, sensing tension. Loki also joins in too, you all come here, alone, I will defeat them all. Suddenly, Sasaki appears, he said, even the gods have conflicts, don't they? Sasaki decides to stand on Buddha's side, because he doesn't like these gods, suddenly, two more individuals appear, also siding with Buddha, at this point, both sides are preparing for battle, this person immediately pulled out a gun and shot at Buddha, but surprisingly, even at such close range, Buddha dodges, Loki also begins to join the battle, but Okita intervenes right away, both of them share a friendly smile, as they were preparing for a decisive battle, Zeus suddenly appears, he and Odin step in to stop everyone. Odin's birds urge them to stop, seeing no one listens, when he raises his voice, it creates pressure. Loki felt he had played enough, so he left first, then everyone else departs. Zeus tells Buddha not to cause further trouble, the only one that can move me, on heaven or earth, is me, as everyone leaves, Odin feels very excited. Meanwhile, Brunhilde has approached another warrior. Gaul sees this guy is all about desire, unsure if he'll be of any use, Brunhilde was chase away a few girls out, when this guy was about to make advances towards her, but he was immediately stopped by her, at this moment, Gaul just found out, this man is Raiden, the greatest sumo wrestler of humanity, he asked, where is my Valkyrie goddess? Suddenly, a tall woman appears, making Raiden excited, as she matches his preferences, some flirtatious words cause the tall woman to blush, by evening, the Ragnarok battle begins again, all sumo wrestlers stand stamp in the stands, to welcome their greatest wrestler stepping out. Raiden's opponent now is an Indian deity. His name is Shiva. Unexpectedly, he has many wives. 
There's also a boy with an elephant head. At this point, Raiden Bin accessed the sumo fighting stance. Rushing to kick the deity in the face, he continues attacking Shiva's head, making Shiva dizzy, but with his four arms, Shiva manages to block. Raiden decides to fight seriously. It turns out Raiden was born in a small village. At three years old, he couldn't stand up yet, worrying his parents. One day, when Raiden attempted to stand, but his body was in great pain, breaking all his arm and leg bones. However, Raiden didn't give up. He continued to practice walking. Muscles developed all over Raiden's body, creating something called hundred seals within him. Now, Raiden has released his hundred seals. His muscles expanded all over his body. But thanks to the Valkyrie goddess, she helped Raiden control it. Because until now, Raiden had never used all his strength. He always restrained his muscles to maintain control. Right at this moment, the strongest fighter in history was born. Raiden immediately charges to defeat Shiva. So fast that Shiva couldn't even see it. When about to end the fight, he's suddenly caught and headbutt by Shiva. Shiva continuously strikes Raiden. But Raiden manages to release his muscles and break one of Shiva's arms. It turns out the Valkyrie's power within Raiden is an upgraded. But all the Indian deities believe Shiva will win. Because Shiva's punch has the weight of 1116 Indian deities. Being repeatedly punched. Raiden switches to headbutting, but Shiva feels joyful. He remembered his friend named Rudra. He is the god of storms, while Shiva is the god of destruction. Both of them fought joyfully together. But one day, Rudra expressed his desire to stand atop the pantheon of Indian gods. Witnessing Rudra's determination, Shiva decided to assist him. Together, they challenged all the other deities, and they consistently emerged victorious, even defeating the lightning god Indra. Rudra could even triumph over him, in this way, both of them defeated 1115 Indian deities, and they stood at the pinnacle of the divine realm, however, Rudra realized, that the final one he needed to defeat was Shiva, despite not wanting to, to fulfill Rudra's wish, he had to battle him, Shiva repeatedly defeated Rudra time and time again, but each time, Rudra stood back up, at this point, Shiva chose to give up, unexpectedly, Rudra said, I've lost, and blamed him for not exerting all his strength in the fight. Finally, he gave up so that Shiva could stand at the top of all the Indian gods. Everyone admired Shiva because he always seemed cheerful. Then, Shiva began to perform a war dance, able to evade all of Raiden's attacks, and constantly attack him from all sides. Raiden enlarged the muscle power in his arm. Zeus recognized Shiva's technique, known as Samsara Rebirth. It continuously burned Raiden's body, but Raiden just smiled, at this moment, Raiden remembered. Although his body was restrained by the hundred seals, but Raiden was still a monster, that made all the children in the village afraid. However, his mother still loved him, at 17, Raiden decided to leave. He went to Edo to become a sumo wrestler to earn money, but he was afraid of hurting others. Upon hearing this, the martial arts master didn't believe it. He stepped forward to fight Raiden. Unexpectedly, Raiden was actually defeated by him, since then, Raiden was determined to train in sumo. Finally, after several matches, Raiden became an unparalleled wrestler. At this point, Raiden took his fighting stance, continuously controlling his muscle power. He struck Shiva directly in the face. It caused Shiva to lose two more arms. Fortunately, Shiva was able to use his hand to block it in time. But Raiden had also reached his limit. At this moment, he said, help me one more time, please, even though he knew his body would be torn apart this time. Shiva saw that all the Indian gods supported him, so he also decided to release his limit, directly stimulating his heart, causing his body to burn turn red. So both went crazy and charged at each other. Every punch and kick from Shiva, all made Raiden's muscles burn. Zeus explained that the technique was burning Shiva's body. At this moment, Raiden kept on defending, hearing the cheers of encouragement from everyone. He rushed up and knocked Shiva away. Shiva realized he couldn't lose either, at this point. Raiden decided to use the three-legged crow once more. Shiva also unleashed his final act flame dance technique, immediately burning one of Raiden's arms. He realized he was defeated, so he allowed Shiva to end the fight. In the end, Shiva emerged as the winner, even in defeat. The sumo wrestlers bid him farewell wholeheartedly. As for Shiva, he had lost three arms. At this moment, he met Rudra again. Shiva acknowledges to Zeus that humanity is truly amazing. Gaul is still crying for her sister. This time, even Brunhilde couldn't hold back. She began to collapse, revealing her weakness. Zeus is currently searching for Buddha. But even though he asked, he wouldn't give him a piece of candy. It's your turn to step onto the field now. Are you planning to destroy humanity, aren't you? 
Zeus tells Buddha to take it seriously. You are the leader, and I will listen to you. Meanwhile, Gaul unintentionally encountered the seven lucky gods group. She overheard them talking about a guy named Zero, unexpectedly getting caught by them. Luckily, Jack arrived and invited them all for tea. When this person intended to deal with him, they realize there's no more time to play with Jack, they decide to leave. So, Gaul was lucky to escape the danger. Meanwhile, Jack has used his eye, to see that they're very powerful and will be humanity's great enemy. Suddenly, Jack invites Gaul for tea, prompting her to remember the previous battle when she deeply despised Jack, for killing her brother, Hercules, and cursing Jack as despicable. Unexpectedly, she's now under Jack's protection. Gaul realizes that Jack is injured, and immediately turns to show concern for him. Jack realizes Gaul also has a pure soul like Hercules. Meanwhile, at the arena, the sixth battle has begun. The first one to step onto the arena on the side of the gods also appeared. The one who always stands alone, reaching the pinnacle of the gods, attaining the state of enlightenment, appearing with a very cool slogan. The only one that can move me, on heaven or earth, is me, causing all the monks in the arena to cry out, because he is the one they always worship, Buddha, all of humanity is surprised because their enemy is Buddha. But suddenly, Buddha changes his stance, continuing to move towards humanity's side, making all the gods astonished, not understanding what he's doing. Suddenly, Buddha announces loudly, now, I'll be the representative for humanity, instantly shocking all the gods, and they start to curse him as crazy, making Buddha furious, smashing the loudspeaker, and pointing his staff towards Zeus. If the gods won't save them, I will, and if any god gets in my way, I'll kill them, instantly making all the gods slightly anxious. Even the gods Shiva and Thor are surprised by all this. Meanwhile, Loki and Odin are very frustrated. However, Gaul is curious why Buddha changed sides like that. She immediately realizes that Brunhilde had planned this beforehand. It turns out that before the battle began, she had met Buddha, while Brunhilde, unaware of why Buddha sought him out, was still trying to finish his bowl of popcorn before speaking. This time, I'll fight for the side of humanity, because Buddha didn't like Zeus ordering him around. Unexpectedly, Brunhilde immediately agrees without any doubt. Buddha is puzzled. Was this all part of your plan? Because even before the assembly of the gods, Brunhilde sought out Buddha to inquire about the cycle of birth and death. She realized that Buddha disliked the gods the most, although he still didn't like the fact that Brunhilde had planned ahead, but ultimately, he stood on the side of humanity, while the referee was explaining that the rules of the match couldn't be changed the side. Suddenly, Zeus appeared and agreed with Buddha, because Zeus is furious and wants to immediately fight Buddha. Old man, I don't mind fighting you at all. Even Odin warns Buddha, are you ready to provoke enmity with all the gods? It doesn't matter who you are, cause in this whole world, I'm just me. Buddha wonders where his opponent is, they're here. Suddenly, a gigantic ship appears in the arena, surprising everyone. Gaul realizes they are the seven lucky gods. So, they step in front of Buddha, but having seven individuals is not in accordance with the rules of the battle. Suddenly, the seven lucky gods say that they are not seven individuals. But originally, they are just one, at this moment, they began to merge again, instantly, causing everyone to be surprised. It turns out the legend tells of not just the seven lucky gods, but there's still one more god, known as the eighth lucky god. However, there isn't actually an eighth lucky god. There is only one god named Zerofuku. As the dark god was just born, he declared to Buddha, I will kill you, while Buddha is still standing there calmly, looking at my face, do I care? Seeing Buddha indifference, it made him angry, and he pulled out a giant hammer from his back. Even the god of war, Ares, felt the terrifying nature of Zerofuku. Unexpectedly, there's a god displaying such cruel aura. So Hermet immediately told him, Zerofuku is the god of misfortune. And thus, the referee officially declares the start of the sixth battle. Two terrifying auras suddenly appear in the middle of the arena. While Gaul thought they were just merging together, Brunhilde has told her, this isn't a merger but the true form of Zerofuku. Originally, he was a god spreading luck throughout the world. But now, he has transformed into an unfortunate god. It turns out that in Asian mythology, the gods were very close to humans living in the celestial realm. Zerofuku is the lucky god who always wants to bring happiness to humans. Once, while out for a stroll, he saw a young bird fall from its nest, so he promptly returned it to the bird's nest. Unexpectedly, the mother bird misunderstood and pecked at his head, Nevertheless, Zerofuku still felt joyful. At this moment, Zerofuku descended to the mortal realm. Unexpectedly, he discovered that humans were only filled with suffering and illness. 
it made him burst into tears, because he didn't know how to bring happiness salvation to them. So, he immediately thought of a way to eliminate their unhappiness. Zerofuku used his divine power, to absorb all the unhappiness from a severely ill boy, instantly helping the boy regain his health. Therefore, everyone began to worship Zerofuku. Please, save us. Even though he had to absorb their unhappiness, Zerofuku was content with his mission. Unexpectedly, after many years had passed, Zerofuku's body was corroded by unhappiness, causing him immense pain. Yet, he still worried for humans, continuing to observe if they were happy. Unexpectedly, Zerofuku witnessed humans starting to corruptible, engaging in excessive indulgence and debauchery. Suddenly, Zerofuku encountered the boy he had saved years ago. But now, the boy had forgotten everything Zerofuku had done for him, which deeply saddened him, and made him realize this is the true nature of humanity. While he were bearing their unhappiness, they were sinking into excessive indulgence and debauchery. Suddenly, a group of travelers appeared, and leading them was none other than Buddha. Although those following Buddha were very weak and sickly, but they were very happy to follow him, quite different from those whom Zerofuku had saved, which surprised him greatly. So, he stood up and asked Buddha, why are those following you so happy, while I have absorbed all the unhappiness of humans, and yet, I am not happy like you? Then Buddha told Zerofuku that, happiness is not something bestowed upon you, and it's something you have to achieve through your own efforts. Where there is darkness, there will be light. At this moment, Buddha is the enlightenment for everyone, causing everyone to worship him, made Zerofuku cry and run away, out of jealousy towards Buddha. Meanwhile, Buddha thought it was just the emotional state of an immature child. At this moment, Zerofuku intensely hated Buddha because he was merely a mortal, yet, he could overcome the god beings like himself. Since then, Zerofuku resolved to become the god of hatred and unhappiness, commencing the slaughter and vengeance against humanity. While preparing to attack this girl, unexpectedly, she was carrying a baby, so Zerofuku couldn't proceed. He then split himself into seven entities, to control the hatred within him avoiding the annihilation of humankind. But eventually, Zerofuku returned once again, still harboring intense hatred towards Buddha. Determined to annihilate him, unexpectedly, he was immediately kicked by Buddha, turns out. Buddha didn't recall encountering him at any point, causing Zerofuku to get frustrated and attack Buddha. But, Buddha effortlessly dodged all of his strikes, making Zerofuku even more frustrated. Several more eyes sprouted on the hammer, Ares noticed that his hammer had significantly increased in size. Zeus explained that as the hammer absorbed more unhappiness, it would grow larger, known as the misery cleaver. So, he continued relentlessly attacking Buddha. Unexpectedly, this strike cut through the entire spectator stand. Gaul realized that the more Buddha dodged, the stronger Zerofuku's hammer became. Yet, he remained calm without flinching, mocking Zerofuku even more. Brunhilde told Gaul to pay attention to Buddha's evasive techniques. Then she noticed Buddha dodged attacks even before they reached him. Buddha ability was referred to as precognition, because he had reached the state of enlightenment, and possesses eyes that can see the movements of souls, can foresee the future, so he can't land a blow on him, you just know how to dodge, huh? So, he was immediately counterattacked by Buddha. Now he realizes Buddha can foresee his attacks. He immediately got angry, thinking that he played dirty, then he goes crazy and continues to attack Buddha. But he continued to be continuously attacked by Buddha. Seeing the humans supporting Buddha, makes him hate him even more. So his power continues to increase. Suddenly Buddha realizes his body can't move anymore. At this point, Zerofuku turns his hammer into a huge one, intending to deliver a powerful blow to Buddha's head. But unexpectedly, Buddha still has another skill. He immediately released Buddha's six realm staff. When Zerofuku's hammer strikes down, Everyone thought Buddha was going to lose this time, but he used the fourth realm technique. Asura realm, turned the six realm staff into a golden shield, named it the shield to destroy the seven misfortunes, immediately blocking his attack. Seeing that Buddha is unfazed by Zerofuku's strike, surprises Gaul, not expecting him to be so powerful. But she also noticed that Buddha's weapon is quite special. Brunhilde explains that the divine weapon is called the the six realm staff, it is within the six realms of rebirth in Buddhist teachings. Each realm has a guardian bodhisattva. All the power of these six guardian deities is contained in Buddha's six realm staff, so he can transform it into various weapons. Even so, Buddha cannot arbitrarily change to any weapon, unless he aligns his emotions accordingly with that weapon. While Buddha still thought that Zerofuku was just going through a rebellious phase, 
He pushes back Zerofuku's hammer, so he also changes the shape of the hammer, and numerous spikes grow out. So Buddha continues to unleash the second six realm staff, called Second Realm, Animal Realm. Unexpectedly, it transformed into a spiked club. Suddenly the spiked club vibrates, it wants to defeat him together with Buddha, so Buddha swiftly dodges the attack and delivers another blow to his stomach, causing him intense pain. Unable to stand up, at this point, Gaul wonders about the weird fighting style, so Brunhilde laughs, because Buddha is always a free spirit, not liking to be bound by anything, that's why he became the strongest person in history, it turns out that in his past life, Buddha was a prince of the Shakya kingdom, named Siddhartha, born into wealth, Buddha lacked nothing, every day, he had beautiful clothes and delicious food, being pampered by others and receiving the best education, because Buddha had been blessed by the gods, promised that one day he would become the king of this world, so Buddha is now the pride of his father, believing that the kingdom will eventually be entrusted to him, nevertheless, Buddha never forgets his people, regularly providing food and sustenance for them, earning admiration from everyone, because Buddha believes that bringing happiness to the people is the duty of the royal family, suddenly, one day, while lying in the sun watching birds fly, Buddha realizes how fragile their lives are, at this moment, Buddha goes to the kingdom of Mala to visit his cousins named Jataka, because he is seriously ill, even though his cousin is the king of the Mala kingdom, both cousins are very close, at this time, Buddha greatly admires his cousin Jataka, because his kingdom is very prosperous, while Buddha thinks his own brother is very happy, then Jataka said that he wouldn't live much longer due to illness, at this moment, Jataka began to regret his life, realizing he had always lived for the people, but never for himself, sometime later, Jataka passed away, Buddha noticed that all the people mourned for him, but Buddha also realized that Jataka had never been happy, he realized that humans always have to endure birth, aging, sickness, and death, so Buddha began to enter the world of enlightenment, at this point, Buddha had completely changed, surprising everyone, they thought Buddha had gone mad or something, he immediately attended Jataka's funeral and scattered many flowers for his younger brother, unexpectedly, Buddha carried the coffin on his shoulders, shocking everyone, Buddha said that Jataka didn't need any prayers, because happiness must be sought by oneself, Buddha let his brother's coffin float down the river, so he could absorb into this world, after that, Buddha left the kingdom, leaving behind his wife and child, and began to become the freest person in the world, on the way, Buddha saw a group of ascetics, suffering from hunger, so he immediately gave them food, which made an old man in the group angry, stay quiet, old man, I will do everything I like, at this point, people began to follow Buddha, just lying in the sun, without any suffering, seeing a child being taken away as a sacrifice to the deity, Buddha immediately rescued the child and was ready to defy the deity, it turns out Buddha dislikes deities because they impose destiny on others, Brunhilde says that Buddha is currently the pinnacle of rebellious youth, although Zerofuku constantly attacks Buddha, he easily avoids his attacks, making Zerofuku angrier, and he transforms his hammer into two swords, so Buddha continues to use the six paths reincarnation, transforming the six paths staff into the twelve diva axe, blocking all of his techniques, so Buddha also begins to counterattack, immediately striking a powerful blow at Zerofuku, making him even more resentful towards Buddha, and he continued to transform his weapons into numerous blades, so Buddha uses the six realm staff, transforming it into a golden short sword, and shattered all of his swords, even though he's fighting, he still protects human lives, at this point, Buddha had overcome his storm of swords, seeing everyone paying attention to Buddha, meanwhile, Zerofuku didn't get any attention, making Zerofuku more frustrated, determined to strike Buddha directly in the face, although trying to advise, you should love yourself, but he still refuses to listen, suddenly, he sees the radiance of Buddha, causing Zerofuku to begin to awaken, realizing he wants to be loved by everyone like Buddha, unexpectedly, his hammer begins to disintegrate, at this moment, Buddha also discards his six realm staff, to engage in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with Zerofuku, so both exchange punches filled with affection, amidst the cheers of everyone, when Zerofuku begins to feel happy, Buddha lands a powerful punch on him, and he is knocked out, suddenly, Zerofuku's aura of misfortune also dissipates, so he transforms back into a lucky deity, while Zerofuku wants to continue bringing happiness to humans, his two horns unexpectedly pierce into his own head, and even penetrate Zerofuku's body, surprising everyone, two dragons emerge from his body, when Buddha intends to save Zerofuku, 
He is then seized by two dragons and fused into an egg in the middle of the arena. Suddenly, a terrifying figure emerges from the egg. Buddha realizes this person is very dangerous, as Buddha can no longer see the future. It turns out he is the sixth heaven demon King Heijin. Even Brunhilde is surprised, because she doesn't know who he is. At this point, Buddha asked, where is Zerofuku? He no longer exists in this world, because Heijin has taken over the body of Zerofuku. Feeling the surging power, he wants to immediately fight Buddha. Even Loki and other gods don't know where this guy came from. Suddenly, a god appeared, causing Ares to feel frightened, because he is sitting in his place, turns out he is Hades the god who rules the hell. Hermes wonders why Hades is here. It turns out he heard that his younger brother, Poseidon, had died. So, he also wants to come and watch this battle. Zeus immediately asked Hades who that person was. So Hades told everyone, he is a legendary warrior from the ancient hell. In mythology, the world is divided into three realms. The upper realm is called Valhalla, reserved for gods and spirits. The second realm is Midgard, for humans and creatures, and the last realm is Helheim the hell. He is also a myth in hell who will bring eternal darkness. The sixth hell demon King Hajin. Even the king of hell, like Hades, has never seen him. He says he hasn't adapted to this body yet. So, he immediately tries to attack Buddha. Unexpectedly, Buddha can block his attacks, surprising him, seeing him as a bit arrogant. Buddha decided to engage in a serious battle with him. So both start attacking each other at a very fast pace. Gaul begins to worry. Unsure if Buddha can defeat him, Brunhilde realizes that Buddha can no longer see the future. It turns out Buddha can see the future, because his eyes can perceive the movement of the soul's light. When the body starts moving, their souls will move ahead. But Heijin has no glimmer in his soul, so Buddha can no longer use his eyes to see. At this point, Buddha has been injured, but he still tries to resist every attack from Heijin, forcing Buddha to step back. Heijin realizes that Buddha is also very strong, so he transforms his hand into a drill and he used the heaven-piercing demon drill technique to directly attack Buddha, so he transforms the six realm staff into a shield to block him, but unexpectedly, even Buddha's shield cannot stop him, he pierces a hole through the middle, causing Buddha to lose an eye amid everyone's surprise, while demon king Heijin is excited, seeing his Buddha injured, causing concern among the monks, the gods realize that this guy is too powerful, Heijin says he intends to strike Buddha directly in the head, but Buddha manages to dodge his thrust, suddenly, he transforms his hand into an axe, and says, let's see how long you can endure, so he continues to attack Buddha at a very fast pace, forcing him to keep resisting, Loki notices that Buddha's left eye is damaged, causing continuous injuries on Buddha's left side, so Buddha turns his body forward, to avoid his blind spot and continue to defend against him, at this point, he continuously attacked and inflicted more injuries on him, surprising everyone, even Hades has to admit, Heijin's strength is unmatched by any ordinary god, because he used to be a monster that destroyed half of the hell. This immediately made Ares fearful, but Hades doesn't understand why. When he destroyed half of the hell, Heijin disappeared. This happened even before Hades ruled the hell. Hermes wonders why Heijin is here, someone has taken the remnants of Heijin, and began cultivating it to create a seed for Heijin's resurrection. Finally, he implanted it into Zerofuku's head when Ares doesn't know who that guy is. Everyone realizes he is Beelzebub. Meanwhile, Buddha is still trying to block Heijin's attacks. When he counterattacks, he gets stabbed in the foot, seeing Buddha being severely injured. Causing concern among humans, however, the deities were rejoicing, although they didn't know who this guy was. Winning would be enough, at this point. He said he would punish Buddha, so he realizes Zerofuku is still somewhere, making him laugh. He has been swallowed by me. Unexpectedly, this angers Buddha, surprising everyone as this is the first time they've seen him like this. This time, I will defeat you. So Buddha activated the six realm staff, the fifth realm. It contains the accumulated emotions of hatred from Buddha. Unexpectedly, turning the staff into a lion-headed sickle, a form that even Buddha has never used before, causing Loki and the other gods to be surprised. Because Buddha has hidden such a formidable weapon, but the Heijin remains unfazed, considering himself supreme while viewing Buddha as mere trash. Thus, he begins his attack on Buddha. So, Buddha also counterattacks, thinking he managed to block it. But unexpectedly, Buddha's counterattack proves to be overwhelmingly powerful, sending him flying backward. However, he continues to advance and thrust towards Buddha. So, Buddha breathes out flames from the lion's head, charging to strike him, forcing him to use his hand to block. 
but unexpectedly, Heijin has also strike a hole in Buddha's abdomen, that immediately causes him pain, he thinks this time Buddha will lose, unexpectedly, Buddha remains steadfast, approaching him, and says, if the gods won't save humanity, then I will, anyone who stands in the way, I will kill, suddenly, Heijin realized that Buddha intended to defeat him, so he kicked Buddha away, he doesn't understand why, after being wounded like that, Buddha still stands up to resist him, unexpectedly, Buddha asks, are you scared now? Causing him to be angry because he feels underestimated, it turns out that the last time he destroyed the hell, due to his overwhelming strength surpassing his body's limits, he exploded and disappeared, so, he is not afraid of anyone, suddenly, Buddha says, you are too weak, even weaker than Zerofuku, causing him to become frustrated and continue attacking Buddha, this time, his strikes are much faster, making all the monks pray for Buddha, while Ares thinks that Buddha is in trouble this time, but Hades scolds him as a fool, because he sees determination in Buddha's eyes, never giving up, even Hermes realizes that, Buddha is waiting for the right moment to counterattack Heijin, Zeus knows that Buddha still has an unused cycle of reincarnation, so despite the relentless attacks, Buddha remains steadfast, he continues to taunt Heijin, Hades notices that Heijin is feeling fear, so he immediately controls his own fear, even tearing off his own arm, making Gaul tremble in fear, unexpectedly, he turns his own arm into a sword, and also preparing to fight Buddha seriously, when Buddha rushes in to attack him again, he uses the sword to counterattack, surprisingly, he was able to cut off Buddha's scythe, turning Buddha's six realm staff back to normal, seizing this opportunity, he attacks Buddha once again, destroying the six realm staff and sending Buddha flying backward, while Beelzebub is still comfortably watching the battle, witnessing the power of the Heijin, everyone is worried and prays for Buddha, Heijin start approaching Buddha, while Buddha, lost in his own trance, sees a strange light, suddenly, it grabs Buddha's hand, bringing him back to calmness, at this moment, Buddha smiles, making Heijin wonder how this guy, who is about to die, can still smile, so, he stands up because this time he is sure he will defeat him, Buddha's hairpin breaks, it turns out Buddha has obtained the handle of Zerofuku's hammer, surprising all the gods, now Buddha wants to use the power of Zerofuku to fight him, so, he activated the final cycle of reincarnation, using the fate's intertwined technique, making Gaul surprised, meanwhile, Brunhilde realizes that Buddha is absorbing Zerofuku's weapons, to make a new divine weapon, it transforms into a sword, named the Great Nirvana Sword, immediately make Heijin terrified, because he saw the seven lucky gods appearing in the sword, Buddha began to engage in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with him, this time, Buddha's divine weapon completely surpassed his opponents, causing everyone to joyfully cheer and support Buddha, which helped amplify Buddha's strength even further, while Heijin couldn't comprehend why this guy was so resilient, despite continuous attacks, he still does not fall, so what are you scared now? That's when Buddha began to counterattack, delivering a powerful strike to his chest. Meanwhile, Okita and Sasaki noticed that Buddha's wound was severe. They wondered if he still had the strength to win. Suddenly, blood started to flow from Buddha's abdominal wound, making him unable to move. So, he was counterattacked by Heijin, thinking he had regained the upper hand. Surprisingly, he still got injured by Buddha's attacks, causing him to continue getting angry. The gods realized that Buddha had reached his limit unable to continue blocking Heijin attacks, however, Hades say that, Buddha doesn't need to block, he just needs to evade, it turns out that this time Buddha's eyes could see the future, Brunhilde realizes that Buddha can continue using his eyes, because this time, Heijin felt fear, allowing Buddha to see his soul, at this moment, Heijin is extremely furious, because he is the great demon king, unwilling to accept defeat against Buddha, he unleashed all his power, striking Buddha and splitting him into two, surprising everyone, who thought Buddha had been defeated, however, it turned out to be just an illusion, Buddha then appeared behind him, launching a decisive strike, combined with the power of Zerofuku, unexpectedly, this time he truly defeated Heijin, shocking all the gods, Brunhilde, however, was delighted, even so, Heijin refused to accept defeat and sneak attack Buddha, but unexpectedly, he dissolved before striking him, at this moment, Buddha saw Zerofuku's soul, radiating happiness, bringing joy to Buddha for having saved him, finally, in the sixth battle, Buddha emerged victorious, bringing great joy to humanity, as their score now equals that of the gods, Brunhilde and her sisters rushed to congratulate Buddha, but at this point, he also collapsed from exhaustion, 
They took Buddha to the hospital for treatment, but he still had the strength to tease Brunhilde. On Odin's side he found Beelzebub, realizing he was the one who summoned Hajin. Despite that, he was excited about his upcoming battle. Zeus noticed the current score was tied at 3-3, frustrating him and hoping the gods would win the next match. Unexpectedly, Hades announced he would step into the arena, seeking revenge for Poseidon's death. Seeing the roster, Gaul was terrified, as the opponent this time was the king of the Hell Realm. However, Brunhilde had also chosen a representative for humanity. It turns out, the one to face Hades is the first emperor of humanity. He is none other than Emperor Qin Shi Huang. Today's video ends here. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to support Oni Chan in future videos. Thank you for watching, love you all.